Hi, my name is Miriam Dehazen. I'm a research scientist specializing in corrosion and microbiology at the Nuclear Waste Management Organization, a non-for-profit organization tasked with the safe, long-term storage of Canada's used nuclear fuel in a manner that protects people and the environment for generations to come. I would like to thank the folks at Women in Nuclear for the opportunity to show you some of the work we do. Today, we'll talk a bit about what makes our approach unique, take a tour of our Oakfield proof test facility, and explain what makes this facility a crucial part of our process. At the NWMO, we've got a singular mission, to implement Canada's plan to safely contain and isolate used nuclear fuel. Canada's plan calls for used nuclear fuel to be stored in a deep geological repository, a network of underground tunnels and placement rooms. The deep geological repository will be located in a safe, suitable location with informed and willing hosts, including municipal, First Nations, and Métis communities. Built to a depth of about 500 meters, depending on the geology, the repository will be roughly as deep as the CN Tower is tall. Its design will rely upon a series of engineered and natural barriers that work together to contain and isolate used nuclear fuel for a million years. This approach is safe, technically sound, and consistent with best practices from around the world. Part of our approach is social, that involves community engagement with potential sites for the repository. Canada's plan will only proceed in an area with informed and willing hosts where the municipality, First Nation, and Métis communities, and others in the area work together to implement it. The NWMO expects to select the site in 2023. Two areas remain in our site selection process, South Bruce in Southern Ontario and the Ignace area in Northwestern Ontario. The other part of our approach is technical. Our team is made up of some of Canada's leading experts in the field related to nuclear waste management. We also collaborate with experts from across Canada and the world to ensure our work benefits from the best available research and experience. The great innovation and work happening at our proof test facility located in Oakfield is the key to that work. At that facility, we are putting to work the latest in science and technology to keep Canadians safe. This work includes optimizing repository designs, demonstrating the safety of the engineered barrier system, and developing a safe and secure transportation system. We are also preparing to use it as a manufacturing facility for the engineered components of our multiple barrier system. We don't do this work alone. We also have an active research and collaboration program involving universities and waste management organizations around the world. We regularly invite internationally recognized specialists to review our work to ensure our work is consistent with current international state of knowledge, that suitable scientific and engineering approaches are in place, and that there is adequate scientific, technical, and sources to implement Canada plan. And beyond research and testing, the Oakfield Proof Test Facility provides us a space to bring communities, industry, and international visitors together for tours and conferences to share our work. About 15% of the electricity in Canada comes from nuclear power, which means we have a significant amount of used nuclear fuel. For nearly six decades, we've accumulated more than 3 million bundles of used nuclear fuel in Canada. If a stack, they would fill about eight hockey rinks from the ice to the top of the board. Currently, Canada's used nuclear fuel is safely stored in interim dry storage container for the short term. However, we need a longer lasting solution that protects people and environment. To safely contain and store the used nuclear fuel for the long term, we have designed a deep geological repository that will include a multiple barrier system. The multiple barrier system is a series of engineered and natural barriers that will work together to contain and isolate the used nuclear fuel. In doing so, it will protect people and environment for generations to come. The five engineered and natural barriers which together make up the multiple barrier systems are the used fuel pellet, fuel element and the fuel bundle, used nuclear fuel container, bentonite clay, and the geosphere. These five barriers all work separately, but together they are stronger, providing added layers of security. At our Oakfield proof test facility, we test several of these elements to make sure they meet our rigorous safety requirements. Let me take you through each part of the multiple barrier system in turn. The first barrier is the fuel pellet, a solid ceramic material that is very stable. The mineral is mined in Canada and baked into a cylindrical shape so that it will work in nuclear reactor. The pellet go inside the fuel bundle to be used in a nuclear reactor. The second barrier is the fuel bundle, which is made up of very corrosion resistant material called zircaloy. It's welded into a shape that optimizes it for the nuclear reaction so it can produce electricity. The third barrier is the used fuel container, which I will talk about in details as we put it through rigorous testing here in Oakfield. 
Used fuel is packaged in a used fuel container before emplacement in a repository. It prevents radioactive materials and the fuel from escaping into the underground environments. Plus, it's engineered to remain intact and keep the used fuel completely isolated. The used fuel container has three components. The structural steel vessel, which consists of a cylindrical shell and two hemispherical heads. The external corrosion barrier, which is copper coating. And the internal insert, which holds the used fuel bundles. It is also especially built for its purpose. In 2014, we refined a design to be optimized for used nuclear fuel coming out of candle reactors. Our used fuel containers are built to be incredibly strong. They are designed to survive 3,000 meters of snow, ice and meltwater, 800 meters of rock and dirt, groundwaters and surrounding clay pressure. All told, they are able to handle a pressure equivalent of being 4.5 kilometers underwater or around 8 CN towers deep. Our used fuel containers are designed to withstand the next ice age and beyond and are protected from corrosion and chemical degradation through the copper coating. We use two processes to coat the container in copper. The first is electrodeposition, where we pre-coat the used fuel container's factory components. A layer of copper is deposited on the container by electrolysis method, which is easily adaptable to the size and geometry of containers, cylindrical and hemispherical components. The second process is coal spray, where we coat the closure zone. That's where the hemispherical and the cylindrical components are joined. It uses a high-speed gas jet to accelerate powder particles toward the substrate where they plastically deform and consolidate into a coating upon impact. This technology is well suited to an automated robotic application which is necessary in a radioactive environment. Once the container assembly is completed, it is encased in a buffer box made of highly compacted bentonite clay. This buffer box is the fourth barrier of our multiple barrier system. Bentonite is an effective barrier to water flow and has proven to be very stable. It's a natural material that prevents microbial growth, which will help maintain the integrity of the container over a long time. To manufacture the buffer boxes out of bentonite, we use a cold isostatic pressing process that takes raw bentonite powder and presses it into dense, compact blocks. We do this by putting the bentonite powder into a rubber bag within a rectangular steel form. The form has a small holes throughout which permits water from the cold isostatic press to squeeze the back. A lid is attached and a vacuum pump is temporarily attached to remove the air from the back. We then send the form to Penn State Advanced Research Lab where it's placed in a pressure chamber and pressurized up to 100 megapascals or an ocean depth of 10 km. Once pressed, the bentonite becomes a hard rectangular block that will need to be processed so the used fuel container can be placed inside. A robotic shaping cell is then used to give the bentonite block its final shape while removing excess materials in a humidity and climate control environment. This particular piece of equipment was designed and built over six months in collaboration with Nubica Solutions, a leading national lab. Over time, a bentonite block can react with water, including humidity. If it gets too dry, small cracks can develop. Too wet, it can absorb moisture and swell in size. Interestingly, bentonite cracks can heal themselves once they are wetted again, one of the reasons we use bentonite as a sealing material. We can reduce the risk of a bentonite block getting too wet or too dry in a couple of ways. In the repository, blocks will be manufactured and used right when they are needed. But in our present prototyping stage, we need to store blocks for longer durations. Because of this, we've created a humidity and temperature control storage area to ensure that our blocks can be kept for as long as needed while maintaining their properties. And finally, bentonite blocks are just that, blocks. They have no lifting locks or other features that can help us move them. To get around this, we use vacuum lift technology that is also used in pipeline technology and rock quarries. The vacuum system can lift several tons and is built with redundant safety systems that prevent block drops, including a vacuum reservoir if the pump fails during operation. It's used to lift, move, and assemble boxes as needed. The final part of our multiple barrier system is a natural barrier, the geosphere. The buffer box and container will be placed in an emplacement room about 500 meters on the ground and surrounded by solid rock. As part of our proof testing, we are conducting a full-scale emplacement simulation. To make this happen, we have built a room that has the same dimensions of the underground rooms and mimics them right down to simulated faux rock tiling. Soon, we will emplace our prototype used fuel containers, our bentonite buffer blocks, and granular bentonite materials using emplacement equipment prototypes. 
We are designing and building these through engineering companies specializing in prototype development. By doing so, we're going to be able to demonstrate our proposed technology while learning and optimizing for future production equipment as we continue to design a repository. A key piece of equipment with our simulation is going to be the engineered barrier systems emplacement machine. To keep our prototyping cost effective, we actually took a regular forklift and added a custom handling attachment designed to lift our bentonite buffer box holding used fuel container. We also gave it the ability to drive autonomously and place that material on its own, and it can be operated remotely by an operator outside the room. Guess it's not so regular anymore. Once the blocks are in place, a secondary piece of equipment will fill remaining holes or forklift pockets with a smaller compacted bentonite blocks. Most of the room will be filled at this point, but there will still be a small gap between the bentonite boxes and the rock. We plan to use a custom design screw conveyor or auger system to push granular bentonite in chip form like limestone screening. Once that operation is complete, the room will be filled with just used fuel containers and bentonite clay. And that brings us to the end of the virtual tour. Safely containing and isolating Canada's used nuclear fuel is an enormous responsibility. And with the innovation, technology, and collaboration we are putting to work at Oakville Proof Test Facility is ones we are taking on with full confidence. I hope you have an understanding of the process and what we do at the Oakville facility, although we've only scratched the surface. If you're interested in learning more, please contact us. We'd be happy to share additional information.